So let me move on to something that's quite serious. And that is some comments about many voices and one Stetson. Just four years ago, we grieved with those in Newtown, Connecticut, find, following the Sandy Hooks shooting at the elementary school. We grieved with Virginia Tech five years before that. And on June 12th of this year, about a month after our own commencement ceremony, life changed for all of us in Central Florida in ways we really have yet to understand. Early that morning, a madman brought horror to downtown Orlando. At 2 a.m., Orlando police received their first call about a mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub. The terror continued for another three hours. College students who were among those killed and injured in the deadliest attack against LGP people, L, excuse me, LGBT people in U.S. history and the deadliest attack on U.S. soil since 9-11. Those students could have been our own if it had not been after graduation. Our students probably knew some of those people who lost their lives. Later in June, 43 people died and 239 were injured in a bomb attack in the Istanbul airport. On July 5th, Alton Sterling, a 37-year-old black man in Baton Rouge, was shot and killed by police outside of a convenience store. July 6th, Philando Castile, a 32-year-old black cafeteria supervisor in St. Paul, was shot and killed during a traffic stop. July 7th, during a peaceful protest against police shootings in Dallas, a sniper opened fire on police and killed five. And then in late July, two 19-year-olds in France killed a Catholic priest while he was saying mass in his own church. The two men had met just days before and each had tried to travel to Syria to join ISIS and both were known to the police. Over 85 people died in Nice when a man plowed through the, the crowd on Bastille Day. Earlier this month, a police shooting in Milwaukee erupted into protests and violence. And just this weekend in Turkey, at a wedding, 30 people were killed and 90 injured in a suicide bomb attack from a very young teenager. We've all spent some time looking at the photo of that, that incredible photo of that little Syrian boy in Aleppo who's really become the face of that terrible war. What in the world is happening? How much more will what we know, what we think we know, continue to shift? When does the other shoe drop and how many more shoes are there to drop? My list could have gone back years and I'm sure there are things to add. Have you ever found yourself asking the same questions? These events were in different places, the circumstances were different, but there was a common link and that was violence. And the violence was about identity and race and religion and gender and fear and hate and power. The violence was about black lives and blue lives, Muslim, gay, transgender lives, decades and centuries of oppression and isms that cross all state and national boundaries with one aim, to subjugate others, taking away their freedom, their dignity, and their safety. So throughout the summer, some of us here in Volusia County and in Orlando, Tampa and Gulfport, in Washington and across the world, have tried to understand and to act. Leaders have talked about race and gender and religion and justice and politics. And I think they have found, as we have found right here on our campus, that these are really difficult things to talk about, very difficult. But we've got to talk about them, and we know we must talk about them, and not talk as a substitute for action, but talk 
leading to action. We've got to explore, discuss, and dissect, and we have to grapple with hard stuff in order to try and understand, and we need to do these things if we're ever going to find solutions. Finding solutions is part of our strategic map. It's becoming a university that does not shy away from looking for innovational ways to tackle complex challenges. And make no mistake, these are complex challenges with solutions that are almost unknowable. In 2010, Mary Gentile, a senior research scholar at Babson, who was previously at Harvard Business School, wrote the book, Giving Voice to Values. In an article the following year, she said, quote, there is an intricate dance between individuals and organizations. We must build the individual competence to voice our values and the organizational culture to fo foster and hear that voice when it is raised. Today, as a roadmap for our voices and our organizational culture, we launch Many Voices, One Stetson, space to talk, learn, and engage. The goal is to remind us that co individual and collective action can make a difference. And to do that, we're launching a year-long program, Conversations with Civility that Explore Issues Impacting Us as a Community. Conversations in not just a safe space, but a courageous space. Conversations with the right framework that can allow us to disagree with one another without being disagreeable. Many Voices, One Stetson is an effort to give our community the space and support it needs to have discussions about the tough subjects that separate us. Success will not be defined by whether we all agree with one another in the end, but that we have agreed to talk about the difficult, tough, and touchy subjects that seem to separate us, but in the end may unite us. I know that some of us think we have just talked too much. Too many conversations, not enough action. Or the talking is just talk. But in a learning institution, talking is an important part of action. So get ready to talk, because we have an entire calendar of events here and in Gulfport, built and finalized around conversation and action. Yesterday, I talked with Professor Chris Bell, who chairs our values commitment team, to work with that team to support and, import, and enhance this important work. And I look forward to their commitment. So some highlights from the calendar that you've received, and that are also on our website, are, and you don't have to open it and follow it, I'm just going to read you a few. On September 19th, you might want to come to a naturalization ceremony. We've been doing these on campus almost every year. And if you want to appreciate and understand and value being an American citizen, all you need to do is talk to these naturalized citizens and see why they want to be an American. On Tuesday, September 20th, is our Values Day. Peter Nyong'o will give our keynote address. He's a member of the Kenyan parliament and a political activist. He's also the father of senior student Peter Nyong'o, Jr., and Academy Award winner Lupita Nyong'o, an author of several influential books and articles on democracy and the process of democratization and change from authoritarian rule. We have an entire day of programming built around his visit. I hope you'll be part of that he will have spent the previous day at the College of Law. As a reminder, September 21st and 22nd, Sue Rank and Associates will be here to review the results of the campus climate study. And through focus up groups, we're going to do more than just talk. We're going to bring home action to make this a great place to learn and to work. In October, our education department hosts the Poverty and Homelessness Con Conference a gathering of frontline in, uh, educators working with families and students impacted by poverty and homelessness. 
This is a public-private partnership st sponsored through our Nina B. Hollis Institute for Educational Reform, the Cross Cultural Center, and the SETI Center for Community Engagement. Mm -hmm. You might have attended what we were calling flash panels. Well, they've been renamed to community flash dialogues just because we like there to be a conversation as part of it. And our first, our one in November is called What on Earth or What in the World is Going On? Where speakers will focus on national and international flashpoints that are affecting us all and try to move toward peace and away from the conflict we see in our daily lives. Also in November, there'll be a panel on the changes in our relationships with Cuba and the opportunity and challenges that that represents. On behalf of Faculty Senate Chair Patrick Coggins, I invite all of you to the annual Martin Luther King Breakfast on January 16th for an inspiring morning with members of our local community that ends with a march, a civil rights march, down Woodland Boulevard to the Chisholm Center. And then also in January, the Brown Center <clears throat> for Faculty Innovation and Excellence will host its annual Faculty Learning Day to tackle big issues that impact the com community. Here on the DeLand campus over the fall term, there are a series of important and critical program events hosted by our Cross-Cultural Center and the Multicultural Student Council, including open forums, safe zone discussions, Inclusion 101, the Stetson alumni storytelling, and the introduce, introduction of what is called the human library. And that's a place where you get to check out a real person, so as opposed to a book. So starting, it was started in Denmark in 2000, and it's designed to provide a positive framework for conversations that challenge stereotypes. So for example, you could go to the human library and check out an activist who leans to the opposite side of the public spectrum from where you lean. Or you could check out somebody whose religion differs from yours, or a policeman, or a clergyman, or somebody with a chronic disease that you are interested in, or all kinds of things, and talk to real people. In the spring, our social justice lecture series will focus on identity and gender issues that have made headlines all over the country and the world. So you have that complete calendar, and it will be on the web. So this is a learning institution after all. If not Stetson, where? Let's make sure we talk to each other and listen, really listen to those who are different and who have different experiences and perspectives. And let's develop action items that allow us to better understand our own identities and that of others. And maybe we will realize that we can form some peace and some um, way to carry through and make a difference in our world. <clears throat> 